Well, we eagerly awaited spring break when the weather would turn warm enough for backpacking. The Smoky Mountains are perilous in the spring, warm sun one day, heavy, wet snow the next. We know that. So our group decided to hike a loop that would keep us off the ridges at night. On our second day out, we came upon an open meadow. After lunch, we stretched out like lazy marmots. I was awakened by wind rustling the yellow leaves, and then it dawned on me, this is March, not October. The golden wind catchers were not leaves, they were butterflies, monarch butterflies migrating north from Mexico. Well, Reverend Jim sat on the ground as still as a statue, and about a half a dozen monarchs came to rest all over him, and he began to talk. These creatures emerge from a cocoon, he said, pulling new legs out of a dry, woven body. All that is left is this little green sack with a neat slit right down the side. As we gazed, enchanted, he lifted one of the monarchs and asked a rhetorical question. And so, where did you leave your old clothes, huh? <laughs> well, that's exactly what Peter saw when he went to the tomb that morning, linen cloths. Mary didn't even see that much. She was too distracted and distraught. The moment she saw that the door to the tomb was standing wide open, she ran to tell Peter, Jesus' body has been stolen. Peter beat her back to the tomb and saw that she was right, at least about the body being gone. What they saw, in other words, was emptiness. Now, there are all kinds of empty, but an empty tomb, I'm not sure that's a good one. We cherish the places where we bury our dead. In my family, it's in the low country, down east, in North Carolina, and we chisel words of remembrance on stones. And there's a solace when you make a visit to the graves. It's a reality that you can understand and make sense of. But an empty tomb there would be an unsettling occurrence. An empty tomb would be a violation. And yet when the angels greet Mary from an empty tomb on that first Easter morning, they ask her why she is crying. He is not here. He has risen. Victory, not loss. Love, not fear. Any way you look at it, it's a mighty fragile beginning for a religion that's lasted 2,000 years. And yet this is where we always focus our attention on this morning, on this tomb, on what happened and what did not happen there. You see, resurrection does not square with anything we know about physical human life. No one has ever seen it happen, which helps me to understand that no one saw it happen on that first Easter morning either. Resurrection is the only event in Jesus' life that was entirely between him and God. No one on earth knows what happened in that tomb because no one was there. They all arrive after the fact. Two saw old clothes, one saw angels. Most people didn't see anything because they were still in bed that morning. But as it turns out, that does not matter because the empty tomb is not the point. The tomb is just that cocoon with the neat little slit down the side. The living being that was inside is gone. The risen one has people to see and things to do. Every time he appears to his friends, they become stronger. Every time he comes to them, they become more like him. So it's these appearances that cinch the resurrection for me, not what happens in the tomb. What happens in the tomb is completely entirely between Jesus and God. So for the rest of us, Easter begins when the gardener says, Mary, and she, he knows, she knows,
who it is. This is where the miracle happens and goes on happening, not in the tomb, but in the encounters with the risen Jesus. On Friday night, as we carried those crosses out after the Good Friday service, we took our places for the silent vigil around the crosses. I looked up into the no snowy night sky and I saw this huge bird flying at us, an owl with a wingspan of about five feet, flew toward us, dipped down, and then flew over those three crosses. Well, in mythology, owls are the keepers of the thin places, those places where heaven and earth are particularly close. And having experienced birds as messengers of God before, I didn't want to miss this one. You know, so I went into prayer for clarity, and I said, Oh God, what am I supposed to see and hear with this amazing gift of this dark wood creature on Good Friday? And the voice came back to me so clearly, To my beloved, to my beloved, remember that I am not contained in a tomb. I am risen. I know all the changes, the transitions, the thin places that you are each facing. I am holding you close. All will be well. <laughs> all will be well. <laughs> it's these stories, our stories, are the only evidence we have to offer to those who ask us how we can possibly believe in Easter. Because we have life, abundant life, that is why. And because we have found to our surprise that we are not alone. And because we never know where he will show up next. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen.